kind of doubt it would be. When you go into a town and start digging bottles in a town, basically the first bottle you find in a town is a drugstore bottle. And the age of drugstore bottles varies wildly. They've actually made them into the late teens, early 20s. Here's an example right here. CA Buck. CA Buck, Wisconsin. It's about a 1920 circa hand finished crop or hand finished drugstore bottle. They made it in the 20s. One of the last things that the uh, bottle class houses did was drugstores. Everything else was basically machine made, mass produced. Some of them were doing custom bossing for the drugstore still in the early 20s. Uh, the variety is endless. Pestle and Mortar is Cass, Cass Drugstore, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Cass was the second last veteran of the Civil War alive. He lived in, he owned a drugstore in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. He was the second last living one in Wisconsin. Uh, Fred Scott with a nice Pestle and Mortar on top of it from Stillwater, Minnesota. This is probably an 18 patent date. I can't read it, but it's a it's an early one, it's 1880s. Uh, some drugstores will have two towns on them. Here's one of them. Litchfield and Grove City. This was done by some other diggers in this town, in this room here. I bought it. Uh, Litchfield and Grove City, Minnesota. I did a presentation out there today. Here's one of my more favorite ones. Hanson and Jezdell, druggist. Shows a lion mixing a mess, pushing a pestle and mortar down in a, standing up on his late hind legs. Probably was called the Lion Drugstore, like a lot of druggists were. Who is that from? Duluth. Uh, druggists had a variety of shapes, colors. Yes, there's a beautiful <laughs> one right there. I brought some of the colors, though. He, the, he took the he's the color division today. Yeah. Uh, Old City Drugstore, Pure Drugs, Finch and Son, Hastings, Minnesota. Ooh. 1878. Yeah. Probably one of the earlier druggists from uh, uh, Hastings with the mill mill round here. Uh, here's an example. Uh, Jeff pointed out. This is Dakota Territory, basically. It says DAC on it. But the bottle was made in 1892. Dakota Territory became 1899, 1889, they changed over. So this guy, this, this manufacturer of White Altatum Company, had the old mold laying around and Tabaro and Williamson poured in their drugstore bottles and they just used the old Dakota Territory stamp on the bottle that's from actually South Dakota, Watertown, South Dakota. But it's just an example of a lot of things that what it looks like is not always what it is. Um, I have a chance. Can you go into just a little more detail on how you knew that it was 1892 versus 1882? Um, Jeff pointed it out, and there's a patent date on the bottom here. There's a patent date on the bottom of the bottle. It's like January 19th or something. 1891 or 1892. I can't believe it. It, 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 it's a new bottle, newer bottle with an older slug put in it. And it's also got a beautiful beaker on it with the graduates on it. I thought it was a Dakota Territory. I didn't get it close enough until tonight. It's not. We went down to a town called Plainview, Minnesota, and we dug probably 30 or 40 of us druggists. Three or four of them were from the Bolton drugstore. The rest were Lambert and Burchard, which became, I think, the Watkins Company. Right. And. Uh, Watkins put out a lot of products. The, the, the house is still standing, but it's been moved. We try to get permission down there. This was a run right here. This is a run right to the car when we dug it. <laughs> uh, we were in uh, Brady, Minnesota. Uh -oh. Brian's hooping and hollering, carrying on. And I, what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> Come on, what do you got? And finally, he shows it to me. And of course, eyes got big as silver dollars and ran right to the vehicle with it. But it's a drugstore I never saw before. Mm -hmm. F.H. Fielder, Albany, Minnesota. Where from? Albany. Off of 94, Melrose, uh, north of, northwest of St. Cloud. Hamilton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we each kind of always end up with something that the other one wants. So. Exactly. Um, a lot of towns, thing with the drugstore bottles, a lot of them were nobody home, 
But sometimes in a certain town, if one guy puts his drug name on the druggist bottle, he's either got a variety of different, or everyone's compete and have a boss druggist. Like here's the town of Malacca, not a very big town. Denison Drug Company, Miles Store, Malacca, Minnesota. I got a feeling this is 1910 vintage. Malacca's not that old, is it really? No, it's, it's old enough, but I don't think that, I, I think there's probably, the history probably going to be about three druggists over the town. Exactly. We have two. You, you have two. Um, James Bennett from St. Peter, Minnesota. That's courtesy of someone else. Big smile on your face. Smile bigger. Big smile. It's like you're taking a camera picture. Uh, cool bottle. Uh, probably 1880s, early 1890s, if like that. The newer druggists, here's one couple from Wasika. It's come out of an excavation I stumbled on 30 years ago. Newer druggists basically have graduates in milliliters or milliliters and ounces. On the top of one of these bottles is a goofy looking three. That stands for the ounce symbol. And then it's got Roman numerals. This has a three, goofy three, which means ounces, and a V1, which means six in Roman numerals. Uh, the, the newer the bottle is, the more, the, the just is not, they're not as articulate, not as pretty, basically. The newer the drugstore that's embossed. They even made ACL drugstore bottles as well, which are kind of collectible as well. And those were made until about 1950-55. Small towns had a lot of stuff. Um, Clifford and McCarthy, McCarthy, Druggist West Concord, down east of here, southeast of here. Cool little drugstore. Uh, when you collect drugstore bottles, more coveted stuff is colors and ones with the animals on it. Here's from the Cranes Pharmacy, Hudson, Wisconsin. Oh yeah. This is a gargoyle. This guy's got a gargoyle on it from Colbrath, Druggist. He's got a devil with wings, and he's holding a pesto, he's sticking on a pesto mortar, and he's got rays sticking out of the bottom of it. And it's a, a very well done bottle. It's an earlier yeah. bottle. Mark, is that mouthwash then? No, this is just a gargoyle. It could be for you, but. Uh, That's a gargoyle on it. Well, well, gargoyles are work with me. It was the mobile oil companies. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, anyways, just got a, a devil with wings on it, you know, quite the contrast with the I mean, devil's last picture there is, basically. Where was that from? Minneapolis. Oh, yeah. This was done within the within feet of the 35W collapse. It wasn't the same time, but it was right, if I would have been there when they collapsed, I would have gotten uh, some, would have had some residual damage. You would have gotten blamed for it. <laughs> well, yeah. I would have gotten blamed for it, taking it, yeah, taking it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it took years, but he did it. Uh, this one, I don't know, I don't think it's that old, but it's turning purple, the manganese in it. R.L. Moreland, Worthy, Minnesota. Just a cool little bottle. Feel free to come up and look at this stuff afterwards. Evelyn, Minnesota. Iron Range. Iron Range bottles. The druggists are hard to find. It's mostly sodas. Just sodas and sodas and sodas. <coughs> Iron Range used the druggist bottles. Hutch sodas tell the teens a lot of times. It used to be a plethora of them, a plethora of them. And then last week, I went to a presentation in Mondova, Wisconsin. And on the way down, I stopped at a shop. And I walk into the shop, and they've got the same Menominee druggist in the shop, same this and that. And this bottle is sitting there kind of hidden behind something else. I pick it up, Victor A. Quavo. Douglas, Rochester, Minnesota. Rochester's been destroyed by uh, mail. All the old stuff's basically gone down there, so finding Rochester stuff is going to be pretty hard to get. Mayo's really decimated that town. Parking lots, expansion. Yeah, Mayo's, they own the whole city. They own the whole thing. <laughs> this bottle, Pioneer Drugstore, L.D. Brown, Little Falls, Minnesota. That come out of Brainerd. Uh, here's another one that come out of Brainerd. We couldn't hardly read it when we first dug it. Witzels, Little Falls, Minnesota, and I tell you what, this guy must have been a lawyer because the print's so small. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can't even tell what town it is. And Pine City, Minnesota. The thing that's kind of neat about this, sometimes druggists do this as well. When the guys making the bottles, they put a little ring or a washer or something on the bottle to make it pop out easier. There's a little. You notice this Breckenridge's Pharmacy. There's a little. Anomaly right here in the bottom. 
he put something in that mold so that bottle would pop out of there instead of being stuck in the mold. Maybe the mold was wore out, but they've done, they do that on bo soda bottles sometimes. And it's uh, got a little anomaly on it. Come take a look at that. It's, I've seen it on certain druggists, not a lot of them, but this one has it. Uh, I'll pass it over to Brian. Okay. Well, I, uh, well, as far as I'm concerned with druggists, I mean, a person could collect druggists. If, if all you did was collect Minnesota druggists, I seriously think that you would be pushing 8,000 plus bottles in a collection. Because Regardless of wherever we go, there's always more and more and more of them turning up. Like, when I started digging Princeton, there was one or two different ones. I have 27 just in Princeton by itself. Okay. So there's there's uh, McCaig and Danielson, there's Danielson by himself, there's McCaig by himself, there's uh, Princeton uh, Drugstore, there's Dr. Armitage, the list goes on. And then I don't. Yes. What are the years of the bottles? Well, the years range from like in Princeton. The earliest one I would say is about 1885 that I can actually find. And the Dr. Armitage was the last one, and he was still kicking around in 1910. So you know you got a wide span. Now when I went to St. Cloud, I don't buy drugstore bottles or anything. So when I went to St. Cloud, there's, uh, what, maybe eight different ones, eight different names, and then you can get all the different sizes. This is a ton from St. Cloud. It's a little perfume bottle. When we first started digging those, because everybody always, like, they're all plain, right? So you'd see it in the dirt, and we were just kind of pitching them. But then we, well, that one's embossed, so we had to go back through the dirt. <laughs> yes. and this one here is doesn't have uh, a city on it, but it's it's Hubert's Deluxe Perfumery. So it's the same thing with Brainerd right now. Where what I I don't even know how many we different ones we've dug in Brainerd, but uh, we went when we went to Plainview, same thing. They they pop out of the ground. Uh, when we dug Stillwater, there's a lot. So like I say, there's literally dozens of them and one of the scarcer ones this one is from Elk River and nobody ever 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 knew anything about this and I'm, I looked around Elk River for probably over 20 years before I dug this one so it's always it's always something uh, this is a amber one from St. Cloud uh, Claire Amber, uh, Anoka, Amber, the green one is from Brainerd. Uh, Put Miracle Grow on your pants when you do Another, dig. another small one, Amber from Montclair. That's the result of Miracle Grow. That green yeah. one. That we put Miracle Grow on the holy holy right. ground. Yeah. All the baby names are in Brainerd. I'm just curious. How many of those green ones have shown up? How many? Amber, Star, and Pat. Well. We know that we know that in this size they had to order at least three different times because of the color variance okay. and we comparing the necks and different stuff. So I believe there's three of this size. Okay. That so are how many have you seen? Uh, kind of a, a rarity. Uh, three, three, three holes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And size wise, any bigger ones? Yes. Three of the little ones? Yeah, there's 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 four on. We firmly believe there's probably going to be an eight ounce. Okay. So. Haven't found it yet. Haven't found it yet, but it's. And, uh, oh, as far as, okay, like like I say, I, I don't really buy uh, drugstore bottles, but like when I was digging in Bassett Creek, I was amazed at how far a range these things come from. This one's Seattle, Washington. I have one from Maine. I have one from Austin, Texas. I have one from Salt Lake City that says uh, FG Schramm Prescription Druggist where the cars stop. Salt Lake City. You know, I mean, so the cars must have been fairly new. And uh, he, he thought that was a great thing to put on his box. So, 
Ogden, Utah. Could he have been at the end of the streetcar line? I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's, where, it's where the car stopped. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if it was automobiles or. But uh, Tennessee, I like this one. Live and let live cut rate drug companies. Chattanooga, <laughs> Chattanooga, <laughs> Chattanooga Tennessee. Well, I mean, it's like, really? Oh, I didn't know they had legalized pot back then. Well, yeah. And the thing of it is, okay, I dug this in Minneapolis. That's all. Yeah. So this one was in Appleton, Wisconsin. That was uh, Colfax. Yeah, Colfax. Yeah, that was Colfax. That was a run right. Everything else based yep. on that thing was machine made. Yep. But here it was. Well, this is machine. No, it's, 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 it's hand It's really close. It's close. Yep, it is. It was the 1920s. They made drugs in the 20s still. Yeah. Uh, boss druggists, and I was firmly believe that they used them in the 20s. I've seen a lot of them. Like that. Well, like I say, if, if a person just, and you, you can pick them up relatively inexpensively, I mean, if a person wants to collect them, buy it and stuff. Uh, but as a digger, you're always going to find a drugstore. Yeah. Sooner or later. It's the, that's the homeowner yeah. bottle, too. Yes. Yeah. And after we get a couple of them, well, that's what we start doing is giving them away to the homeowners. And they get excited and then they tell their neighbor. And so we're like a virus. We get yes. into a town. <laughs> yeah. There is no cure for this. What's that? There is no cure. No. There's no cure for this. No, there is not. And it's exciting to go to another t any other small town in the town and find something new and kind of just, it's like going out fishing or catching your walleye, your blue walleye on a lake or. Yeah. Big big bass or something. Same thing with bottles. Same thing with a boat in this. We we equate it to people say, well, you know, uh, why should we let you dig in our yard? And we tell them, well, it's like fishing, and this has gotten us a lot of permissions. So everybody fishes in the state of Minnesota, and then we tell them, how would you like to go have when you go fishing that you have to knock on somebody's door and get permission to use the lake. And then once you're done for that day, you can never come back to that lake. You have to go get permission from another person to fish in another lake. And that sinks into their head. And so we use that as a way of uh, convincing people that this is our hobby. And then two hours into the dig, they're like, well, this is really fun. And when you start giving them bottles, they're like, this is great. They can't so, believe the stuff's there. Just no, like, oh, no they, they will all mm -hmm. tell you there's nothing buried in my yard. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. they but the bottles are there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the druggists, like I say, they're, they're uh, by the time we've got four or five holes in a town, we're given the, the plain view of the Boltons and the whatever else away. Yeah. 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 And uh, because what are you going to do with them? You know, once you get. Because he had four or five of them. We look for a variety. But it's a good door knocker giveaway, too. Yeah. We knock on doors and tell them, hey, you know, if you let us dig, here's a bottle for you. And they get all excited. So. Yeah, I have drawers full of them. <laughs> and they're nice, they're attractive bottles, they're bought. Yeah. I mean, it's a poor man's bitters. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they have local interest. Now, like you take the Elk River bottle, you know, I mean, as rare as it is, in St. Paul, you probably wouldn't get five bucks for it. But, you know, I mean, you could, you literally could dig for 15 years and probably not find another one. Yeah. So. Well, I, I imagine, you know, you knock on somebody's door and you hand them the bottle and they go, I know some yeah. McCassins. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting thing, and these are these are the more common stuff, and uh, they're the get in the door type, game. and they make a good collection. They make a good collection, absolutely. Variety is endless. So if you want, you can come up and look at them. And Green one's radioactive, so don't touch it. Yeah, the green one can't touch this one. Can't touch it. <laughs> What's that? Souvenirs, huh? Oh, cool. <laughs> no.
I left those at home. Oh, Say, <laughs> so how many different tones? How many green ones you got from other tones? Yeah. Yeah. None. Uh, this is my one. Uh, got them from Oshkosh. Got them from St. Paul. Wampers one from St. Paul. Beautiful label. Beautiful one. Wamp AJ Wamper. Yeah, Wamper. Wamper St. Paul. W. Frost from St. Paul. I have a damn uh, Starks. Frost has got one? Frost. Yep. Yeah. Starks has got one. Stark out of Minneapolis. It's a, it's a light, light aqua. George Toner out of uh, uh, Menominee's got a light aqua one. Uh, there's, one there's one from uh, Mankato. It's a light green. Claire's got a couple of uh, Fred Gatsby. It's a, it's a cure. And there's another one from St. Paul that's green. Uh, can't think about it. There's another green one from St. Paul. Yeah, there's not a lot of color. Colors are tough. Greens, Stillwater's got them. How about blue? Milwaukee's got them. Lacrosse has got them. Iowa's 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 got them. Iowa